Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to um, Success Zone. Um, Friday morning, Friday morning, October 12th. And uh, hopefully everybody has a great weekend planned. And uh, as we always do on Fridays, we want to open up um, to allow people to come on the show, uh, the show, <laughs> to come on this platform um, with our motivational video. And, and really what I'm going to talk about today a little bit, uh, we're going to do the four agreements. Um, but, you know, when you talk about leadership, um, everything rises and falls on leadership. And, and one of the things we try to really emphasize here on Success Zone is once you make a decision to become a leader, followers will follow. And, you know, leaders have certain qualities. And uh, I always say, you know, if the leadership is in place, means your vision is in place. And if the vision is in place, you gotta then have, right, your deliverables. You gotta have the product that needs to be delivered to the consumer base, right? And, and leadership is, is, is never ending, okay? Right? You're always, always evolving, right, to bring on certain skill sets. And this is why I always say, Okay, it's, it's, it's harder to work on yourself than it is the business. So let's start off with our, uh, our, our video that really talks about... Uh, have a very simple distinction, and that is their thinking is different. Leaders do not think like followers. Leaders used to be followers, all of them. But what made them cross the line was a certain mentality that kicked in somewhere something happened to them that made them think differently and i normally call that attitudes that influence people if you want to be an impactful personality you have to develop certain types of thinking and perceptions that change the way you see yourself and see the world i call this the spirit of leadership now there are only two animals on the planet that the creator identified himself with I want you to write them down and when I read the Bible I was shocked to find that there are two animals that the creator identified himself with the first one is the eagle the eagle and the second animal is the lion and the lion has what I call the spirit of leadership and this word spirit here is referring to attitude a leader has a attitude that makes him or her different from followers and the lion exhibits that attitude we have to cultivate the same attitudes that the lion has because the lion apparently has been given the same attitudes that God himself identifies with and he put it in these creatures and apparently you and I are supposed to be the king of the animal kingdom the rulers of all animals so obviously we have somewhere trapped on the inside these same potential attitudes one of the saddest things I discovered is that you need a tombstone people who are successful don't need tombstones the reason why we need tombstones is because we were so useless on earth that wherever they planted us, they have to mark the spot to remind us that you used to be here. I want to challenge you from this day forward, and I believe I was sent here from my country to tell you to live in such a way from this point on that you wouldn't need a tombstone. spot on earth qual é o lugar mais rico da terra it's the cemetery é o cemitério and why is the cemetery the wealthiest spot on earth e por que é o cemitério o lugar mais rico da terra because buried in the cemetery porque enterrados ali no cemitério are books that were never written estão livros que nunca foram escritos in the cemetery no cemitério 
are buried estão enterrados music that was never played música que nunca foram tocadas paintings that were never painted pinturas que nunca foram feitas estão nos cemitérios the graveyard is filled o cemitério está cheio with businesses that never opened com negócios que nunca foram abertos magazines that were never published revistas que nunca foram publicadas ideas that never became reality ideias que nunca se tornaram realidades that never became a reality visões que nunca se tornaram realidade estão no cemitério What a wealthy place. Que lugar rico. The graveyard is a rich place. O cemitério é um lugar rico. Because buried in the graveyard. Porque enterrado no cemitério. Great men. Estão grandes homens. Died as alcoholics. Que morreram como alcoólatras. Awesome women. Mulheres impressionantes. Who died as prostitutes. Que morreram como prostitutas. Viciadas em drogas. What a wealthy place. Oh, que lugar rico. Why? Por quê? Because people took their treasure to the cemetery. Porque as pessoas levaram os tesouros para o cemitério. I am afraid. Eu tenho medo. That sitting in your chair right now. De que sentado aí na sua cadeira agora mesmo. Is a person. Está uma pessoa. Who is a candidate. Que é um candidato. To add to the wealth of the cemetery. Para acrescentar a riqueza do cemitério. Many of you in this room. Muitos de vocês aqui neste lugar. Are carrying books. Estão carregando livros. That you've not written. Que você não escreveu. Music. Música. That you've not written. Que você não escreveu. Businesses. Negócios. That you've not opened. Que vocês não abriram. Magazines. Revistas. That you've not published. Que vocês não publicaram. Schools. Escolas. That you've not opened. Que vocês não abriram. You're sitting here. E você está sentado. With that treasure. Com esse tesouro. And every day that passes. E cada dia que se passa. You are getting closer. Você está chegando mais mais perto, mais perto to the do cemitério. You didn't come to this planet, você não veio a esse planeta to receive, apenas para receber, to give. mas você veio aqui para dar. God sent you here Deus te enviou aqui with an assignment com uma missão to fulfill. para cumprir. Don't rob us. Não nos roube. Don't let the cemetery não deixe o cemitério get your treasure. pegar o teu tesouro. Die empty. Morra vazio. Smartandrelentless.com All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get this going here. So share. All right. So, where's our where's our videos? There we are. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, um, you know, I I wanted to um open with leadership because, you know, I I'm 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 a firm believer that once people make a decision, because leadership is nothing more than a decision. It's all it is. Okay, it's a decision to become because I, I love what they said in that video that all leaders were once followers. All leaders were once followers. And once that decision is made, okay, now you become. And, you know, a lot of people ask, what, 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 what is leadership? And the way they describe it is it's a spirit. And uh, uh, your spirit is an attitude. It's an attitude of how you carry yourself, right? When you walk into a room, right? When you're talking to your people, um, when you're leading a presentation. And, and that attitude has an attitude of, I know that I know. And what I know, I need you to know. That's leadership. And, 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 and when, you, when you have this attitude that you know that you know, other people, will identify that you know. And then that becomes, right, your movement. It's, it's, it, now, now understand something, leadership cuts both ways. I could lead people to do bad and I could lead people to do good. But that attitude is different than followers. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that there's many more followers than there are leaders. And we know this. And we have to understand that what we are offering, and I'm going to make sure, we're going to emphasize this. If you believe in your leadership, number one, if you believe in your product, number two, right, and everything that you are standing by is ethical and moral, okay, you have the right foundation. We talked about that, okay? If any one of those things are missing, Okay, you got to really, really, really step back and say, okay, hang on a second. I either have to change, right, or I have to lead. 
okay, you have to lead, but I have to make sure I'm leading people. If I'm out of control, if I'm not in control of certain things, I have to make sure where I'm leading people is where I want to go. And here's the breakdown, everybody. The breakdown is if you're unsure, guess what happens? Procrastination kicks in. And when procrastination kicks in, nothing happens because you're not sold on where you're telling people they need to go. So where's the sellout have to start? It has to start with us. We have to be sold in what we're doing, all of us. And this is why I get really nuts when people try to call something something it's not. Because to me, that's just an embarrassment of what you're doing. And I'm going to give you an example, right? We'll talk about our industry, right? You could call it multi-level marketing. You could call it direct sales. You could call it network marketing, right? But if you can't say what you do and you're not proud of it, who would follow you? This to me is the basic, the, the, the basic, um, um, destruction of our business. It, it's, it's what happens. So when people ask me, I say, I do network marketing. I do direct sales. I do multi-level marketing. Because as Eric Worre says, I repeat it a lot, it's not perfect, it's just better. Well, let me ask you a question. If I tried to call it something different, but you knew what it was, would you follow me? Why am I trying to convince you that it's okay if I'm in it? Let me tell you why I'm in it. Let me tell you why it's just better. And this is where sometimes, right, you start out being involved and you can't even tell people what you do. That makes, that makes me nuts. I want you guys to all practice and tell people what you do. Now, whether they have a perception or not, can I tell you what their perception becomes? Regardless of what their perception is, since they now have met you, their, per their perception becomes you. So you're going to give them a whole new outlook of what it is that we do because here's the deal. All we do is we bring a, a product to the marketplace, but we do it through multiple levels of people that will make a percentage of that transaction. Can I ask you a question? Is that not traditional business? Show me one product in America today that when it moves, a layer of people don't get paid. Show me one. I'll, I'll, I'll sit here and I'll wait. Okay. No, when a product moves in America, people are compensated. It's called an economy. We're just one of those people that get paid. So what would you be embarrassed about? Well, you know what people are embarrassed of? The execution. Well, who becomes the executioner? Okay. Who becomes that person? Who becomes that person? I am. And if I'm sold on what I'm doing, and I know I'm going to lead in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a proper way, why would I not want people to get involved in my business? Do you see where the belief has to come in? Do you see where the attitude is? And if someone has a negative attitude about the industry, okay, I could go down that road and maybe try to switch their thinking but if it does if it takes too much effort i have to go to the next person because guys i'm not here to try to convince everybody remember you can make a fortune on a very small percentage of people and all you have to do is you got to go out there and you have to be very 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 impeccable with your word because if you guys have read this book, and I've done this training many, many times, a lot of you have, have seen it uh, numerous times, okay? But here's the thing I, I want you guys to understand, okay? When you go out there, 
there's four agreements that you need to really buy into. This is a book, by the way. It's called The Four Agreements. If you haven't read it, it's a short read, but it's a very impactful read. Because if you align yourself with the four agreements, you can always get up, look in the mirror, and just look at yourself and say, you know what, I'm on the right path. But sometimes when you adhere to the four agreements, you're going to upset a lot of people. Because the people that are impeccable with their word speak with integrity. They're never going to tell people something they haven't done. That's one of the things I look for within the leader. Have you done what you're telling us to do? Have you done what you're telling us they need to do? That's one thing I want to make sure of. So speak with integrity. Be there for your people. Lead people. Show them the way. I never tell people something I haven't done. I can never be a trainer and train on something Lisa and I have never done. There's no, there's no integrity there. Some people just speak with vision and vision and vision and never deliver okay, what they're speaking the vision about. I can't follow that person. I'm sorry. And there comes a time and place where vision ends. And now you have to deliver. That's speaking with integrity. Say only what you mean. Sometimes, you know, I step on people's toes because I tell people what I mean. You don't have to candy coat it. It's called straight talk. Because I'm here, time is valuable. I want to tell you what you need to hear right? So we could all move on from it and get to where we need to go. Say what you mean. Now, this could cut many different ways. If you're leading a team and you have certain people that are not keeping up, tell them where you believe they need to really focus in on. It could also mean when you're presenting your opportunity, tell people what you're looking for. Don't dance. Tell people what you got. Tell people what you're looking for. I have a great nutritional supplement. Here's what it does. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for people that really want to join our team and make money with this product. I'm looking for people that want to change their lives financially. Or maybe not. I'm looking for people that I can get on my product and get an unbelievable result from it. Isn't that what you're looking for? You're either looking for one or the other, correct? Well, you got to tell people what you're looking for. Sometimes we dance and the person leaves the conversation and says, I don't know they were looking for somebody that wants to get involved in their business. I didn't know they were promoting their product because we never get down to it. Why? Because we're not sold on what we're doing. So this is what I mean by saying what you mean. So when you're impeccable with your word, you're very, you're very clear. I'm very clear based on the situation I'm in, what message I want to get across. Sometimes it hurts people's feelings, right, when you say what you mean. But I'm not doing it to be a mean person. I'm doing it because I have identified probably that this is somebody I want to work with. This is somebody I would love to grow with me. Otherwise, why would I give them my, my time? The time? Your time is the most valuable thing you can give people. You know that, right? You're going to understand this, especially as you grow a network here. You only give your time to the people that are doing the right things. If you got somebody that fights you every time you say something, or they're not edifying you, 
or edifying the system. And it's a constant struggle. Why would I need to keep working with that person? I have something that can change their life, but they have to accept it. But we have to be very clear in what it is we are presenting. <clears throat> Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. See, everything is about the word, right? Powerful. Words are powerful. Can you remember something maybe somebody said to you that had an impact on you, good or bad? I mean, I could go back to many different conversations I've had with, with the mentors that have led Lisa and I through 20, it's now 26 years, guys. October is our anniversary, 26 years in the industry. And I could go back and I could go back and say that was a turning point because someone spoke. I'll give you one. When one of the, my mentors, and I said to him, I was crying to him, it's not working. It's not working. I'm frustrated. And you know what he said to me? Not much. He said, no desire. And walked away. No desire. And I've heard his training over and over again. It was called the attributes to success. Number one thing you have to have in place for something to work is desire. It, 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 it ignites all the other attributes, being willing to do whatever it takes, being teachable, being self-reliant, being consistent and persistent. And he looked at me and said, no desire, Jeff. And he was right. I didn't sell out. But he didn't care if he hurt my feelings. Believe me, that person never cared if he hurt your feelings. But he was doing it from his heart. He was doing it from his heart because he, people need to hear it. I, you know, sometimes I look at our society now and we're just afraid to say anything to anybody. Right? Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody's a winner. Okay? And I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but you know what? Well, how does that get you to want to grow? Whether I participate or not, or whether I give all my effort or not, I'm still going to get the same trophy the winner got. No, no. Why do you think there's people, 98% of the people out there will struggle and only 2%? Well, I want to know what the 2% is doing. And this is where you're impeccable with your word. Use the power of your word in direction of truth and love. If it's coming from your heart, that person I talked to you about, I knew it was coming from his heart. I knew it was coming from her heart. It's easy to have the good conversations. Hey, Alicia, great job last week. Sonia, man, you're killing it. No, it's hard to have the tough conversations. Hey, Alicia, let's look at your goals together. Okay, are you where you want to be after this amount of time? Well, no, well, let's try to figure out why. Let's have that conversation, right? So it, it, this is what you're going to do when you start to lead a team. You're identifying. But the first person you got to look at is yourself, okay? And if you're out there and everything is just a complaint, you got to really, really, really be careful here because you could derail your entire organization. Let me tell you why. Not everything is going to ever be perfect. Remember, vision, product, commissions. If those things are in place, okay, if those things are in place, you got to be very, 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 very stern in, in telling people what you're looking for. And you got to be confident in what you're bringing them into. Number two, don't take anything personally. Oh, my gosh. This is the toughest one to, 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 to navigate people through. Because this is where you're trying to decide, am I a leader? Because if every conversation you have, you're like a candle in the wind. 
right? You ever hear that song by Elton John, Candle in the Wind? Okay, that's, that's, that, that's kind of how we try to be a leader. And if I'm talking to somebody negative, right, it destroys me. If I'm talking to somebody positive, I'm pumped up. Well, that's called an emotional roller coaster. Okay, I don't take anything personally. I know whatever people say to me really has nothing to do with me, has everything to do with their experiences or, or, or what they've done, gone through in their life. See, nothing others do is because of you. Nothing. That would be very narcissistic to think my one conversation has everything to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. Remember the fear training? It's based on what they've learned. It's based on their past. It's based on their environment. It's based on the people they hang around. So their venom, if it comes through as venom, has nothing to do with you. So how could it affect you? You just nod and smile. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality and their own desires. So when, when someone is very animated and gets kind of mean and venomous to your offering, okay, you gotta understand where that's coming from. And how do you, how do you derail that? Does anybody know after all these trainings? Hey man, I get it, I hear you. I understand the way you feel. Sounds like you've had an experience. Can you tell me about that? Maybe that opens them up. Maybe it puts their defenses down. But my whole point here, hang on, sun's coming up. Maybe the whole point here, okay, is that when you hit, when you, when you hit a nerve with people, that could be the hot button. See, I, I, I had a conversation with a group yesterday um, um, on a Zoom meeting, and I was speaking my truth. And, and the truth I was speaking, they didn't want to hear, and they became very venomous. Because I knew what I was saying they knew was true. And it's just, instead of just saying, hey, man, you're right. You're 100% right. Let's work together to fix it. No, they tried to make me feel like I was crazy. And I knew it was the truth because it was. But see, I didn't take that personally. I can't. Because then they win. They've destroyed you, correct? I, no, no one's going to destroy me. And if it's an unsolvable problem, guess what? Jeff and Lisa have to move on from that conversation. You have to move on from those conversations because I'm, no one's gonna steal my dream. And, but here's the thing, I don't treat that person any different. I understand why they are where they are. See, this is leadership. When you are immune to the gossip and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Now, let me talk about this for one second because some of us never get past that. And here's, here's what I'm going to challenge you. Figure out why. Why does every yes or no affect you? Are you just holding on to that as a built-in excuse not to keep moving forward? Believe me, I've always said this. If you're looking for an excuse, you will find it. Whether that be a basic excuse on why you're not making your phone calls, why you're not networking, why you haven't personally developed enough to do a presentation, why you avoid three-way calls, whatever it may be, okay, you got to understand you're in this needless suffering phase. And the only way to break out of it is to embrace the exact things you don't want to do. 
That's what leaders do, guys. You, you have to challenge yourself. But I'm going to urge everybody, please, don't take anything personally. Okay, number three, don't make assumptions. Never make assumptions. See, assumptions feed procrastination. Assumptions feed procrastination. What does that mean? Well, we, let's go just with the very basics. And the very basics is you have to make a list, correct? You started a business and you want people that you could present your product or your opportunity to. But if I'm making assumptions on who will and who won't, then guess what? I'm gonna have very few people on my list. Why? Because you've already determined the yes or no. In fact, in most cases, you're gonna determine the no. Because if they're not on the list, I don't have to get uncomfortable, do I? In other words, if they're not on my list, I don't have to make the call. I don't have to go through the conversations. I don't have to maybe put myself up for ridicule. So I take myself personally. So making assumptions is a killer. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Sonia, Lisa and I just started a business. Man, we are so excited, okay? We have this product, fill in what your product is. And we are now launching our business throughout the United States. I thought of you, I thought of you. I'm putting together our founders group. I'm putting together my board of directors. I'm putting together my core group, fill in the blank. And I know you keep your business options open, Sonia, because I know we've been doing some things together over the, over the last few years. And I know you're always looking. Now, is that not clear? Is she going to say, I wonder why Jeff called me today? Some people you call, they're trying to figure out why you called them. No, I'm going to be very clear in what I am looking for and what I'm looking for Sonia to do. So, Sonia, here's what I want you to do first. I'm going to send you this video. It's going to talk to you a little bit about the product. But then I want to transition you and really show you what we're going to be doing over the next 18 months, Sonia. Okay, Jeff, or no. Okay, Jeff, or no. Okay, done. No, Jeff, I've been in four of these with you, and you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to do a fifth one. <laughs> All right, got to go. Click. I'm okay with that. But you know what? She never could say that Jeff and Lisa, okay, aren't always looking. Some of you look at people that go from a company to, you got to understand sometimes why. They're still looking. What's wrong with that? What if your story... Let me ask you this. What if you've been in five, six? What if your story was, you know what? It took me six to find the one where I became a, a multimillionaire. So what? Can you imagine anybody who hasn't gone through five or six failures ever and became a million? You go, oh, I hit it day one. Good for you. It took me six. but I'm never gonna make an assumption, never. And I'm gonna tell you this, guys, this may sound a little harsh, I'm just telling you, we think people care. People don't really care how many you've been in. So that's the other thing, we're afraid to call people because you've called them three times in different, weren't you in another one? Yeah, didn't work out, found another one. So what? What are they gonna think about me? Who cares? Here's what they should think about you. You're still looking. And they're still broke. 
We always wonder, oh my God, I've called this person six times and it was six different opportunities. Well, guess what? I found this one, Sonia. It's the seventh one and this is the right one. What is she going to say? Yes or no? What do I want? A yes or a no? What am I asking her to do? Watch the information. But I'm not going to make the assumption. No matter what, I'm just using Sonia right now. She will always be on my list. Always. Alicia will always be on my list. Always. They'll always get a call if something happened. Doesn't make a difference. I'm not going to make the assumption for Alicia. Hey, Jeff, no, you know what? The other one didn't work out. I'm not following you here. All right. I don't take that personally. I get it. Still love you. Hey, you know what? Success zone. You know how many people didn't follow me from world, but they're on success zone today? You guys know that, right? They didn't follow me into world, but you know what? They, they can't say that Jeff isn't passionate. If Alicia said no to me, Alicia, by the way, success zone's still going on. Love to see you on there, girl. Why? Because, be, be, because you're still giving. Just because they said no doesn't mean you got to cross them out and hate them and put, a, 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 put them on your dartboard. She didn't follow me. Who cares? Don't make assumptions. To communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. I just showed you how to do that. There's no drama. None. The only drama is what we create. We create the drama. With this one agreement, you completely transform your life. It's amazing because you're at peace. You're just on a journey. And I'm telling you, you know, when I say people don't care, but you know what? They respect. The reason they don't care, because if they cared, they have to look within themselves. And if they look within themselves, they're going to realize they not, they're, they're not where they want to be. And once they realize they're not where they want to be, they have to what? Change. And what do people fear? Change. Well, one thing for sure, if Jeff and Lisa keep changing, okay, they can't say right? That we're going to settle. You guys following me? I, I just want you to understand it doesn't matter what other people think. Some people take that. You just don't care. No, I just don't care what other people think. Jeff and Lisa have to care what Jeff and Lisa think. That's it. And I'm here to share. And I don't want, I, no one could say that, right? That we're not going to continue to try. I mean, a lot of you got all up in arms because some of your leaders just left your company. And you're trying to figure out why. Well, listen, you, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why some people leave. But if you still buy into what they're doing, then that's your journey. So what? We're swayed. Remember, we're a candle in the wind. But once again, don't be delusional. Don't be delusional. <laughs> if it's been nine weeks and you still haven't gotten paid, okay, there might be a little clue there. You, you need to get out. And I'm just telling, oh, right, just telling you. So don't make assumptions. Okay. So when you do that, here's number four. Always do your best. If you do, you stop the pressure. Always do what you tell yourself, excuse me, you're going to do. But I'm a big proponent of reverse engineering. I now have to tell myself what to do. In order for me to do my best, I got to tell myself what I need to do. I have to have a plan that I bought into. And let me tell you, not to make this thing difficult, just follow your company's plan. 
they're not going to teach you something that doesn't work. That would be, that would be ridiculous. Just have your plan to follow the plan. And I'm telling you what the plan is in every company. Talk to more people. <laughs> that, that's it. That's all you could really do. Or improve your skills. Well, how do you improve your skills? By talking to more people. The best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Right? Hey, today, okay, I'm feeling really good. I'm going to make 50 calls. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to this networking event. Or I'm going to have this social event. But always put your best foot forward. Remember, you've got to always be prepared because this is a business, okay, and you guys have heard this, of any time, anywhere, with anybody. You don't have to put the infrastructure on your back and carry it with you, right? You are the infrastructure. You are the business. You're, you're all things to all people. And I got to always be mentally prepared to do business. I went to the um, Laker game the other night um, in Vegas. The Lakers played a preseason game here. And I had this young kid next to me, 34 years old. And we just started talking, okay? Moved here from, moved to Vegas from um, uh, Silicon Valley. <clears throat> and I said, why did you move? And he said to me, he said, um, well, my family, my family is, is it's a very negative thinking family. He goes, I'm not saying anything bad about my mom and dad, but you're right, they're in the same house. They're struggling the same way. My older brother, Okay, has a kid, he's not married, and he lives with my parents. He goes, I had to get out of that environment. He goes, I don't know anybody here. I said, what do you do? He says, I work from home. I'm an accountant. He goes, but I love basketball, right? And, and I'm here, and I'm just listening. I'm just listening. And he started telling me all this stuff. He told me his whole life story because we were there like an hour early because I like to get everything in, right? Watch warm-ups. I like to people watch. And so we were just talking. And he said, what do you do? I said, you know, I, I'm in personal development. I help people break out of what you just told me. He goes, really? Wow, this is, this is unbelievable. I've met you. I said, we, we, it was just a conversation throughout the whole game. I said, you know what? You need to read this book. And I told him what book to read. I go, because what you just described to me is exactly what this book is all about. And I told him to read Outwitting the Devil. He put it in his thing. I said, you know what? I also have an opportunity. And it seems like you're in a big life change. And I'm just giving him guidance. I'm going to be meeting with him today. He goes, I'm open. I am so open. I can't see myself doing what I'm doing. But for the, my point was, I have to be prepared. If I didn't want to listen to him, and I'm just here to watch the game, okay, guess what? I could have missed an opportunity of the next what? Multi-million dollar earner in the industry. How do I know? I don't know. But I'm going to give him a shot. And I promise you why he's even open to meeting with me because I was open enough to listen to him and his situation and be empathetic and gave him some direction to follow. He's, he's searching. He moved from California to Vegas because he needed to get away from his toxic environment. And he hasn't created it yet. Because he's home because, uh, as an accountant and doesn't really know anybody. What can I offer him? I could offer him an environment that could help him grow. Could I not? See, that's what I believe I have. And this is where I, I piss off some people, but I don't care. It doesn't matter about the widget. I could be offering him anything. In fact, he doesn't even know what I'm offering, but he's going to meet with me. 
There's a lesson there. I didn't mention telehealth. If it was wearables, I wouldn't have mentioned the wearable. If it was, if it, if it's nutritional supplements, I wouldn't have mentioned that because that was that. That's not what he was looking for. I had to match the opportunity. Believe me, he will love telehealth by the time I'm done with him today because he doesn't care. All he knows is I care. Big lesson there. Be prepared. Is that the Boy Scouts? Oh, you can't even call it the Boy Scouts now. Now it's the Scouts. You guys know that, right? The girls can now join the Boy Scouts. Don't get me started. Okay, anyway, <laughs> always do your best. Always be prepared because you are stealing from people if you're not. I'm telling you, this kid, who knows what can happen? I don't know. I know one of the top earners in the industry was a busboy. That's what I know. Jeff Liberti. He was a busboy at a restaurant. You know how much money he's made in the industry? Over $247 million. What if someone never gave him an opportunity? Somebody saw something, somebody presented it, and here we are every day making assumptions. I won't talk to him. He's just bagging my groceries. Oh, those days are over. Bad analogy, right? No one bags your groceries anymore, okay? Okay, my point is, I'm always, always looking. And I'm gonna ask the right questions. This guy just spilled his guts. And you could see that he's just, he's just, he's just stuck. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm not gonna make an assumption though. We're gonna go for lunch. Okay, now, under any circumstances, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. This is the killer for most of us, guys. We beat ourselves up for no reason. We're harder on ourselves. But if you just set a game plan and you follow it, then guess what? You had a successful day. I've, I've talked about this numerous times. But once again, here we are, it's Friday. Another week gone by, where to go? You ever say that to yourself, where to go? Well, okay, let's look at where you were last Friday and let's look at with, 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 with where you are today. Did you grow? Are you better than you were last Friday? Then you're on the right journey, guys. You'll be able to track it with dollars soon. But now you got to, I remember I, I told this story before. I remember just going through the motions of coming to the meetings, being on all the trainings, taking unbelievable notes, and just doing presentations. But never holding myself accountable for the outcome of going to meetings, taking notes, and doing meetings. Until that mentor, remember, no desire guy said to me, okay, you need to always have money in the room. See how I never forget these things? I said, what do you mean? Money in the room. He goes, Jeff, you do tons of meetings. Do you have money in the room? Or are you just doing meetings for everybody else's people? Seems to me, because I see your paychecks, Jeff, you're just doing meetings, right? for other people's people. And so from that point forward, Lisa made sure I had money in the room. And if I would travel, the phone call that I would get would be Lisa said, how many, what did we do? What were the results? She didn't want to hear that I did a great comp plan. Now it was different. We were treating our business like a business. Some of us just go through the motion because we like doing presentations. But we're going broke doing them. Why? No money in the room. Personal money in the room. Not downline money. That was the other thing. Personal money. 
In other words, we had to have guests. And so then we made it a point Every time there was a webinar, a three-way call, or a live meeting, we want to make sure we had personal money in the room. And that's how we started to treat our business a lot differently. We were actually open for business to make money. <laughs> Imagine that concept, right? But we, I'm telling you, I'm laughing, but a lot of people don't think that way. If you had a traditional business and your overhead was $30,000 a month, let's just use that because it's easy. How much business do you have to do per day? You're open seven days a week, $1,000 a day, correct? And you'd have your hours of operation. We are open nine to nine. Now you know without a doubt, you have to hold yourself accountable that between nine and nine, you need at least $1,000 in business that was done. Otherwise, you're behind the eight ball. So at the end of nine to nine, you did 800. I promise you the next day, your goal is now 1200. That's just break even. And this is how businesses run. But how do we run our network marketing, multi level marketing, direct sales? business do you have what you need to make every day most of us the answer is no if you want to make five thousand dollars in 30 days how, divide that by 30. i'm not that quick two times uh 30 is 600 400 600 eight six times uh eight times uh whatever okay you know what it is okay now that should be your month, your, your daily goal. Let's say it's 200 bucks a day. 200 bucks a day would be 6,000 for the month, right? Yeah, 200 bucks. Do you know what you need to do in your company to make 200 bucks? Some of you are just working right now, just one vision and I get it, but you know what? <laughs> Vision's getting old. We gotta start making money, okay, for some of us, okay? Other companies, right, you have a product. Do you know how much money you make? when you sell that product. If you sold a product for a hundred bucks, do you know how much you make? Well, yeah, Jeff, I make uh 20%. Okay, so on every hundred, you make 20 bucks. Well, how much product do you have to move every day? It's, 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 it's basics. And if you had a traditional business, you would know your number. You know why? Let me tell you why. Because you have built-in overhead. Here you don't. Oh, you have your auto ship. I'm sorry. You have your auto ship. What's your auto ship? 100, 150? That's your overhead. And some of you are worried about covering your auto ship. And then you're talking to other people about becoming wealthy. But you can't cover your auto ship. And you're wondering, should I stop my auto ship? Do you see the broke thinking? We don't know what we're running. This is how I was talked to. Jeff, you're not running a business. You're just running a, a, a um, you, love, you love the meetings and you love the parties, Jeff. That's what was told to me. And meetings and parties equal money if you're focused in on having money in the room. And that's what, that was the one ingredient that we needed. Then we just made a calendar and we said, okay, we want to make $20,000 this month. And then we knew how many people had to buy our product and how many people had to enter into our business to do it. Then eventually, once we build a, built a team, we could do less personal business and focus more on what the team was doing. But in the beginning, the person that has to push the snowball up the hill is you. So those are the four agreements. I recommend this book to everybody. Like I said, it's really, it's, it's a two hour read, maybe. If you just sat down, there you go. Okay, show it, Alicia. Put it up there. There it is. I think it's uh, Miguel Ruiz, right? 
the author. Yep. So great read. And if you've read it, let me let me give you another advice. Read it again. <laughs> read it again. Okay. Appreciate you guys. Have a great, great, great weekend. Talk to you all soon.